The annexation of Crimea four years ago, Russia has taken on a larger role on the world stage. From the conflict in Syria, the allegations of meddling in foreign elections to Moscow's influence uh, seems to be everywhere these days. And for more now, in a re-emergent Russia, let's bring in CNN contributor Jill Doherty from Moscow. And Jill, as I mentioned, a few of those things, uh, obviously... A lot of those, um, a lot of the influence that Russia has had on the world stage have not been for good reasons. Some have led to serious sanctions. So what can we expect uh, for a fourth term from President Putin? You know, Linda, um, perhaps to the West they haven't worked and that it's been bad and there have been sanctions, but Russia has kind of gotten through uh, a bit through those sanctions and domestically some of this uh, standoff with the West is working, at least among the people who support Vladimir Putin. I mean, the way they interpret it is Vladimir Putin is standing up to the West. Uh, he is pushing Russia's interests on the international stage, and uh, they're proud of him for doing that. So although it may seem counterintuitive, I think, to some in the West, here it sometimes works. But one of the problems is, just a couple of weeks ago, the president gave a speech, major State of the Union speech, so to speak, and he talked about Russia falling behind, that if it doesn't do economic reform, he was talking specifically about technological reform, I, I should say development, and if Russia does not get with the program on that, it will definitely fall behind and be left behind a whole lot of other countries. Now, if he really believes that, that means that he has to do some economic reform, that the government actually has to try to encourage uh, IT development, et cetera. The question is out whether they can really do that, whether they can foster it, because usually the approach is top down as opposed to bottom up. And then, you know, the, the final thing here that's very complicated for him, if he does that economic reform, there is some fear that it might just kind of mushroom into something that could lead to a change of the system, a la Gorbachev when he started, you know, opening up, opening up, and then all of a sudden the Soviet Union ended. So there's that fear too. It's a complex thing. He has to do something, and yet how he does it and what he does it is key. What he does is key. And Jill, we're just uh, seeing the latest exit polls. He has over 73% of the votes that have been counted so far. You, of course, have lived on and off in Russia for decades. Putin, we know, has been in power either as prime minister or president since the year 2000. Just give us a sense of why you think he is so popular there. Well, you know, I alluded to some of it, Linda, and that is uh, that he... They were, people who support him say he brought Russia up from its knees. Russia is standing tall. It's part of the world now. It's a major player. And maybe the West doesn't like it. Maybe people don't even like Russia, but they respect Russia. And that's pretty much the viewpoint, at least of those who support him. There are a lot of people in the opposition who think really uh, very differently about the president. I think also, don't forget that in the beginning, especially right after Boris Yeltsin, Vladimir Putin was able to improve the economic situation of many Russian citizens, and they still remember that. They remember the bad old days in the 90s when there wasn't even enough food. And uh, I think those, those would be... And then also, uh, one other thing, I was talking with some Russians just today about this, that finally, when they had Mr. Putin, they had a president who was vigorous, strong, uh, not unfortunately, like Boris Yeltsin, who had a drinking problem. So they were finally proud and not kind of embarrassed about their leader on the world stage. That still continues, at least among people who are a little bit older and who remember those, those days of Yeltsin. So I think for all of those reasons, and perhaps more, that's why they like him. And of course, still the main opposition figure, Alexei Navalny, did not get a chance uh, to run in today's election. He was banned from running. It gives a sense of where the momentum is for the opposition. When you look at the land mass of Russia, where does the opposition have its power base? Uh, right here in Moscow <laughs> and in St. Petersburg and, and the bigger cities. But essentially, it's a big city. Um, 
educated, better off people who support him or are interested in what he's saying. They're the people, and young people as well, who feel, and I've heard this so many times, that their future is being stolen. Uh, by just the system that's here, by the system that's been created, and that they don't really have uh, a future equal to the future of young people around the world. There's, there is a frustration among some people, young people, I think small business people who don't feel that they can really thrive the way they would like to, and those people are attracted by Navalny. He is very effective in communicating by social networks, social media. Um, j just today, they had their own kind of, uh, I would call online TV station where they were, uh, you know, reporting on what was happening at the polling stations. So he is, um, he's a canny person. He's effective on many levels. Uh, where he will go from this, uh, you know, obviously he couldn't run, but he can certainly continue to communicate and get his message across. All right, Jill Doherty, always great to get your perspective uh, there from Russia. Great to have you with us.